This morning, America is remembering one of the country's greatest heroes, NASA legend John Glenn, died yesterday at the age of 95. He was the last of the living Mercury 7 astronauts, the seven men with the right stuff to become America's first astronauts. Then on February 20th, 1962, a milestone in the space race as Glenn became the first American to orbit the Earth. Roger, zero day, and I feel fine. Capsule is turning around. Oh, that view is tremendous. Just incredible. After leaving NASA in 1964, Glenn never strayed far from the public eye. He then served 24 years as a Democratic senator for the great state of Ohio. But Glenn never left behind his dream of returning to orbit. Then, in 1998, he did just that again, becoming the oldest person to go to space at age 77. Joining us this morning is former NASA astronaut Tom Jones with us. Good to see you, Tom. Thanks so much for joining us. Good wow. morning, Maria. What an inspiration. He was for me and, and so many other astronauts. If we wanted to be good astronauts, you em emulated John Glenn. Can you characterize his legacy? Well, he came to uh, represent to so many Americans. Uh, Americans uh, struggled to catch up to the Soviet Union, and by his flight in 1962, we were back into the space race after years of being behind since Sputnik five years earlier. And he really put uh, the underline under President Kennedy's pledge to put an American on the moon by 1969, 1970. Uh, with his flight, his single five-hour flight, America was back in that race, and of course we eventually overtook the Soviet Union. Uh, his uh, legacy lasted through decades because future astronauts and scientists and explorers looked at his uh, career and wanted so much to be like him. I remember as a young kid, 10 years old, I wanted to be like John Glenn and the other Mercury 7 astronauts. I bought books about them. I <laughs> later got it signed by John Glenn himself. So when I showed up in the astronaut corps, I think the pinnacle, one of the pinnacles of my career was actually meeting John Glenn when he came back to fly on the space shuttle. Wow. Tom, it's Dagan McDowell. Are you dismayed in a way about the current state of our space program and where it is? Because again, it's not just what NASA discovers about the world and the universe, but it's also creating people who inspire generations of youngsters in terms of just ach achievement and, and goals. Well, that is, the, uh, I think, one of the main benefits of the space exploration program that the, the U.S. and NASA run is to inspire young people to go into the tough fields of science and engineering and technology so that they can solve problems for all of us, not just in space but back here on Earth. And, you know, you contrast the time of Glenn's flight in 1962 when the U.S. was throwing out all the stops to try to catch up with and pass the Soviet Union in space for military and prestige purposes around the globe. Uh, to today, when we're really basically marking time. We've had eight years of lost opportunity in space, and I think we can be on the verge of uh, getting Americans back on the frontiers of space, out at the moon, the asteroids, and Mars, but that takes leadership from the White House. It takes a budget that's commensurate with the goals that we set for NASA. Tom, it's Mike Murphy. Um, people like yourself and John Glenn paved the way for um, peop for the what we have today as the modern space uh, mission, and now you're seeing people like Elon Musk and the private sector trying to make it more. A, you know, talking about people being able to move back and forth to the moon and, and going up uh, through private, being funded by private dollars. Is that something you see really taking off and possibly even replacing NASA? Yeah, there's no turning back, Mike, from uh, the commercial sector aiding NASA in space exploration. They uh, will be providing rides to astronauts to the International Space Station, both Boeing and SpaceX, in the next couple of years. And beyond that, when NASA wants to be out at the moon or uh, going to an asteroid or eventually to Mars, those commercial companies will provide the supplies, the logistics, the launch capability to get NASA in a position to do those pioneering flights. So it's going to be a private-public partnership that's going to mm -hmm. succeed at this, along with our international partners. Hey, Tom, Brian Brenberg here. You know, when you look back at the life of John Glenn, one of the things you notice is the extraordinary risks he took. I don't think we appreciate sometimes just how much we didn't know about the things he was getting into. Can that sort of thing still happen today? Are we too risk averse today to send a John Glenn type person into these kinds of roles as we did back in 1962? Well, back in 62, our opponent was the Soviet Union, and our challenge was to build technology that could get a human to space and back. And today, we have a lot of that technology in hand, but I think our challenge today is um, to overcome our adversity to risk, to take risks that put a human being three days or more 
uh, at the moon from the Earth and safety. Now we've gotten used to in the last 30 or 40 years to just being uh, circling the Earth every 90 minutes. You're only a couple of hours from home. When we go out into deep space again, starting in about 2020, and I hope it's faster than that, right. that with the White House direction, we will be putting people where they can't get back to Earth in an emergency. We're going to have to understand those risks and take them if we're to lead. So what about SpaceX? Let me go back to that for a second, because the company had a major setback a couple of months ago, four months ago, when one of the Falcon 9 rockets burst into flames. Elon Musk, the CEO, says SpaceX is ready to fly again. What role do you think the company plays in the future of space travel? Well, they're one of the pillars of NASA's access to space. To support our work at the International Space Station, where there are two Americans living right now, uh, we need American transport to get out from under the Russian monopoly. And so in about two years, SpaceX, Boeing will be providing these astronaut transport flights, first some test flights in 2018, and then uh, routine uh, bi biannual uh, trips to the space station. And then um, I think beyond that, uh, Musk's company and others, uh, Sierra Nevada Aerospace, uh, Blue Origin, they'll be providing logistic services to a NASA outpost in lunar orbit, and they'll be providing the rocket propellant uh, to get us to the asteroids and Mars. Maybe that propellant will be mined on the moon or the asteroids. That's all going to be commercial sector activity. Incredible. Yeah. Fascinating stuff. Tom, thanks so much for joining us this morning. We appreciate it. Tom You're Jones welcome. there. Come